Number 13 then from paper 1 of the 2017 hire. Here we go, it's an integration for 4 marks. There's not actually an awful lot to do here. You don't even have to evaluate it. It's an indefinite integral. There's a little bit at the side. X is less than 5 upon 4. But that's just a little disclaimer so that you don't try and put either a negative into a square root or a zero into the base of a fraction. Well, just write that in index form. So that's to the power negative a half. Now you see you've got a function of a function, but at least it's a function of a linear function. So that's one you can do when you're integrating at the higher. So add one to the power, divide by that power. Now you can write over a half if you like, but you're better off multiplying by the reciprocal rather than dividing by a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal a half is just two times it. Now what was inside? It was a five minus four x. If you were differentiating, you'd have multiplied by the derivative. You'd have multiplied by negative four. Whereas here, since you're integrating, you're going to do the opposite, which is divide by negative four. And don't forget, plus c. Well, you're virtually there. So I would just cancel that down to a half. So negative a half of five minus four x to the power of half plus c. And I've decided just to leave it as power of half because it started off with power of half rather than rewriting that as square root. But if you feel so inclined, you could always finish off as negative a half times the square root of five minus four x. And if you wanted to be neater, instead of having that subtract sticking out the front, you could put the c in front of it. But I don't believe that would be necessary, and that would be the full marks. Number 14, seven marks here. You can see straight away, here it is. There's the wave equation. At least it's in paper one, so you won't need your calculator for this, obviously. Up at part B, sketch the graph. That's one of the worst ones, but at least it's in degrees, I suppose. So first part, express it in this form here, sine. So what is that expanded? So that's k times, and when you expand the sine of a difference, it's sine x cos a minus cos x Oops, sine a. I'll just rewrite that to show the coefficient quite clearly. So it's k cos a, cos a lots of sine x minus, and it will be k sine a lots of cos x. I was just hesitating because they're not going to bother if you don't put these in. All these things, all these little degrees signs should be in all over the place. I don't think I'll put them in after this. So comparing them, side for side. The coefficient of sine x, the coefficient of sine x should be root 3, so k cos a is root 3. k cos a equals root 3. Oh, put it in. And the coefficient of cos x, which is negative 1, is negative k sine a, means k sine a is 1. I'm going to put that on top. k sine a is 1. Or you could have said negative k sine a is negative 1, and then the negatives would have cancelled. Now that's a pair of simultaneous equations, which you've now got to solve. And the way they're solved, which you don't need to show at all, is if you square and add them, you'll get this. k squared will be 1 squared plus root 3 squared. Well, you might recognise you've got a 1, 2, root 3 triangle there. That's 1 plus 3, which is 4. So k is the square root of 4, which is 2. Not minus 4, because it says k is greater than 0. And if you do equation 1 divided by equation 2, you'll have k divided by k, which will cancel, sine over cos, which will make the tan of a, and that'll be 1 over root 3. And a quick check, where is this? All oh, sine, tan, cos. Well, the sine's positive, and the cosine's positive, so you're in the first quadrant. So it's just the case of what's the acute angle, and you'll be there, and you know this one. You know that particular one there, with the 1 for the shortest side, Two and the root three for the medium one. One's opposite the smallest side's opposite the smallest angle. Tangent opposite over adjacent is thirty. A is thirty. So this is this annoying thing? Better off just put A as thirty. You could put A degrees as thirty degrees, but you shouldn't really put A as thirty degrees because then that says thirty degrees degrees. They're not going to bother what you do with that particularly. Right, put it all together, so it's equal to 2 sine x minus 30 degrees.
So in part B then, when it says hence or otherwise, sketch the graph with this equation, you're just going to sketch the graph of this one instead because it's the same thing. And it's just a sine graph which goes up and down two and starts, notice minus, 30 degrees forward. So sine graph going up and down two. So from there you're going to go up two, down two and back to the start. But when you do that, of course, you've gone too far because you started at 30. Here again, X is just meant to be a number. But if you put degrees in all of this, there won't be a penalty, I wouldn't imagine. So that means that that's actually going as far as 390. So I'd have to stop before it. But you can see the amount here because I've got to get this bit in. So continuing that graph backwards would take it to about there. So if that's the start when X is zero, taking that forwards should put the completing wavelength about there. So that's 360. Not sure what they'll do if you draw the extra little bit on. Oh, you're sketching a graph, so that means you should show where does it cut the axis and where are the turning points. Well, all these parts here are easy because you know where they are for a sine graph. It should hit the top at 90. It's going forward 30, so it's hitting the top at 120. And the amplitude's 2, so it's got as high as 2. It should have crossed the axis again at 180. It's gone forward 30. So it's going to cross again at 180 plus 30, which is 210. It should be at the bottom at 270. So it's going to hit the bottom at 30 more 300. And the bottom's down at negative 2. So that only leaves one point I've not mentioned, and that's this one. Where does it cross the y-axis? Well, it crosses the y-axis when x is 0. So you could put x in, is 0 into here and then work this bit out, but it's actually for this one easier to use the original. Just one extra little note, when x is 0, y would be, and it's easier putting 0 into this because you know the values of sine and cos at 0. Sine is 0, so that part goes, so you've just got minus cos of 0, which is 1, so it should be minus 1, but I'll show it anyway. That'll be root 3 sine 0 minus cos 0, and of course that part's zero, so that comes to negative one. 